Hi guys! Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to servo match two or more servos to a single surface. Now, why would you need to do that? Firstly, it could be because you have two servos on tandem on Rudder for a large model, such as our example that we have here that we're going to be using to actually go through the steps later on in the video, where both servos are linked directly to each other. So any kind of mismatch there would cause the servos to both overheat and overdraw, possibly even burning out if they're not set up correctly. Equally, the process will be the same for any other surface, such as the ailerons on my 100cc extra, where I have two servos on the wing, albeit not directly linked to each other, as we do for the rudder, but both on the same surface and therefore needing to work in unison. So we're going to be using Powerbox and specifically I'm going to show you on the Royal SRS. Now despite using this particular unit the process is exactly the same regardless of what Powerbox you have whether it's a competition, a cockpit or even the top of the line Royal they all work in the same way. So just follow the steps and I'm sure you'll have it set up in no time. Okay so here we have two servos set up in a line both on the same channel and we're going to try and get these to work in perfect unison. Now in theory it could be possible to set these up manually however the chances are that the even if you set it up perfectly in the center the endpoints will always have some kind of deviation which will result in stressing the servos unnecessarily as well as overheating and eating too much battery power per flight. So if we go into the menu now these two servers are already connected to my rudder channel as you can see in outputs M and N. I've programmed those previously uh, via the input mapping and output mapping However, if you have queries on how to do that, please see the link below for the video on how to set up those channels via a Mercury or any other power box. This video, we're only going to show you how to do the servo matching. So we go into the third menu, the servo matching, and we can see a screen. This particular screen, there's going to be one screen per output on the power box. In this case, as you can see, the first one is output A, which we can change up until however many channels our Mercury has. In this case, as we've said, we have channels M and N, outputs M and N. Now, the way I normally set these servos, one servo I'll use as if it was the master servo, which is the one that I will program via the transmitter. I will adjust any sub trim endpoint and so on for this servo via the transmitter and then this servo I'm going to do everything I can to match it so that it works exactly the same as this one. So output N in that case we can leave as it is as stock as standard and we need to go to output M so we can set it up. Okay, so output, we select the output and find output M. There we go. Exit out of output. And as you can see, it's automatically telling me that because I've already previously selected that M is rudder, it's also telling me that the channel that I'm controlling is rudder. Okay, if I try to start matching the channel straight away it's going to come up with an error message asking me to initialize the channel first. Why do you need to initialize the channel first? Basically because as you're going to have two servos running on the same surface or in this case against each other directly the power box needs to know the inputs that your transmitter is going to give to the power box so the power box knows how to translate that into signals for the servos. So if we go to the bottom here, 
click on initialize channel and as we move transmitter we can see this bar going from side to side and it's marked out at the bottom three little triangles for the center and the two endpoints of the signal that the transmitter is giving. Now ideally you want this to be the highest endpoints that your transmitter is going to give at any point in flight, setup, programming or even adjustment at a later date. Once you've done this, simply exit out of initialize channel. We now have a little tick saying that that has been done and we can continue with the other steps. Now in this case both servos are working in the same direction as we would want them to. However, sometimes we need to reverse one of the two channels. So we have a very easy option here, which is reverse servo. We simply select that. And now if we move our transmitter stick, as you can see, that's now reversed that particular servo. Servo on output N, which is this one. In my case, as that's now wrong, I'm going to reverse it back. And there we have working the right way around. Now, to actually match the two servos up, we go back to start, and we need to do the same process three times. Once for the center point, once for one end point, and once for the other end point. The idea is each one of those is going to match perfectly in a way that we can then simply slot our ball link onto the screw without any need for force or pressure. So we press start and that actually locks us out of the transmitter. So the transmitter no longer has any control over the servos. The servos are centered and no matter what we do on the transmitter, they're not moving. So now with the up and down keys, we can simply move that servo as we want to find its new center point. So we just need to find that, play around with that a little bit until you get it right. There we go, as you can see, absolutely no pressure at all, and that fits in there perfectly. And the servo is not screaming, shouting, or causing any type of fuss at all. Okay, so always remove that again before exiting out of it. I'll show you why in a moment. Now move your transmitter stick all the way to one end, and whilst holding it there, press set again. Now, as you can see, once again, see, no hands. The transmitter's locked us out and is holding the servos in that last position that we were holding. So full lock one way. Now again, we just need to use the keys to move the servo in such a way that it will now fit perfectly onto our push rod. Again, this is just a case of playing around with it until you can get it right. There we go, spot on. Again, still perfectly. No screaming, shouting, because it's just slotted in. It's, it's not even causing any force whatsoever. Now, again, remove it. Why do I say remove it? Because at the moment we're locked out of our transmitter. However, as soon as we press the set key, we're going to regain control. So unless we hold the transmitter stick at full deflection, as we were doing to start with, they will bounce back to wherever the transmitter is currently i.e. in the center, like so. Why does the power box have that feature? Simply because it allows you to have two hands to operate the switches and place the uh, push rods onto the servos whilst not having to hold the transmitter at full deflection whilst doing all of that. It just gives you an extra free hand. So we've done the centers, we've done one endpoint, we now need to go to the other endpoint. So we pull that down that way. Again, we press set. Still gonna need a little bit more there. So we're gonna move that down a bit. Let's move that to roughly where it is. 
and again just play around with it until until it looks about right. So perfect. Still no screaming, shouting or problems from the servos. Disconnect that. And as soon as we let go, it'll bounce back to the center. Now, just to prove a point, if you hold the transmitter to one end, do the setting, play with the endpoints as you will. But if you hold the transmitter at the same place, simply let it go and you can bounce back slowly. Or do with it whatever you wish. And that's it. Now, test slowly that it indeed has stored exactly where you wanted it to. There you go, perfect. One perfectly programmed servo to another. Now we simply exit with OK. And we're done. Easy. Okay guys, well that was it. I hope that you uh, found that helpful. Good luck setting up your uh, servo matching in your next build. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop a line below, leave them in the comments. And if you found the video helpful, remember to like and subscribe to uh, keep up to date with all my latest videos. Thanks for watching.